Hello and welcome. Welcome to the three keys to creating a family life that you love and who doesn't want that? And before we even start, I'm sure there's plenty about your family life that you already love. And I want to actually take a moment with you for us to just settle in here together and to even close our eyes and to start thinking about the things that we love and about the things that we dream of for the future. So right off the bat, you're here with me now. Let's just take a deep breath in. Let's just connect that vision and that dream that we have for our family life. Because I'm gonna bet that you, like me, went to great lengths to establish your beautiful family. It's not easy to start a family. It's not easy to run a home. And we put tremendous energy into it. And I bet that you have big dreams for yours. You have these, this vibe that you want to create. You have an atmosphere that you want in your home. You have the types of relationships that you are hoping to build with your children. And that dream is so important and so big and so profound. And I am here to honor it with you and to make sure that we actually take the steps that it takes to get there. All right. So how do we as parents take these steps? And you can let me know right now in the chat. What do you do when you're like, oh, I want to create you know, more peace at home. I want my kids to listen to me more. I want to create more order in my home. I need to organize it better. One of the things that I do, I'm totally guilty of this, and I think most of us are, is that I turn to social media. And why not? It's a place where we can pull thousands, no, millions of people's wisdom, maybe billions, and we get a lot of inspiration. But one of the darker sides of social media is that it can lead us to feel comparisonitis. It can lead us to feel like we're lesser than other families. We see everybody's highlight reel and we compare that to our behind the scenes. And that's not always so favorable. Am I right? Another thing that you might do, and this is totally positive, all of these things are, you might create mood boards and vision boards and imagine what it is that you want for your future. And again, that's a great thing, but sometimes we can feel like, why am I not hitting these goals? Why does my life not look like my mood board yet, right? And you can attend workshops like this masterclass right now. We can learn, we can take classes, we can go to therapy, we can go to coaches. Uh, we can scroll endlessly through blogs and articles and vlogs. And you know, this is just what my Pinterest looked like today, okay? Here's what Pinterest is serving up to me. Signs of bad parenting, 36 clever mom hacks that you need to know, five parenting mistakes that will damage your kid's mental health, right? And we see these lists and I don't know about you, but I feel like, wow, there isn't enough time in the day. If this was a full-time job, I couldn't get through all these articles. And even if I read through all of them, could I even implement a small percentage of them? I don't know, do you? Let me know. Now, the thing is that here's what I already know about you, just because you showed up to this workshop, just because you're nodding along as you say, yeah, social media, scrolling, mood boards, pinning, coaches, therapists, thinking long chats with my husband into the night, you know, coffees with my girlfriend, trying to brainstorm, how do I do this parenting thing right? Here's what I already know about you, is that you are curious, you're loving, you're engaged, you're open-minded, you're invested, you're willing to grow, you you know, you really, really care deeply. You're a very, very caring and loving parent. And that is incredible. And with these types of, you know, goals and ambitions and that type of character that you and I have that we're searching for answers, we can also sometimes feel doubtful, hesitant, like our constant searching can leave us feeling guilty or worried or even ashamed about past mistakes. I mean, have you ever had that experience? I've had this so many times where I read an article and I think, oh, that's exactly what I just did, right? Or, oh, I feel so guilty about my past mistakes. Or I feel so anxious about the future because this article is telling me that I'm gonna damage my kid forever with these behaviors, right? And it kind of perpetuates that, continuous sense of searching for the answers. Do you know what I mean? What I want to offer you here today is a big old pause to all of that cons consumption, okay? You can still enjoy, you know, Netflix or Pinterest for recipes and for entertainment, but I want to offer you the opportunity to press stop on the endless consumption of more and more ideas, more and more corrections, and switch modes into creation. 
just like someone who's constantly looking at recipes but never actually doing the recipes, we don't want to be like that in parenting. But we're constantly looking at ideas and looking at other families and feeling that jealousy and that FOMO, but not actually creating the results that we want in our real life. And that is going to be the big change that I promise you here today. And I want to thank you so much for being with me because this is my absolute passion and my life's mission. And I really believe that it is possible and available for you. So today we're going to unlock the three keys that are going to help you to implement, right? Your vision for your family. What came to your mind when you closed your eyes just now, right? Maybe it's family meals or time in nature or an organized home or a meaningful relationship with my kids or less conflict or more ease. All of those things are amazing goals. Let me show you the keys, all right? So stick with me here. We're on a journey and I invite you to say hello in the chat. Introduce yourself. I'm going to introduce myself in case you don't know me yet. Hi, I'm Avital. I am the mother of five. I'm happily married and I'm the founder of High Fam and of the High Fam studio, which you're going to be hearing more about today. That is my membership where I teach all of these things. Now, as the mother of five, here's, here's one thing I can share with you which is that I really understand that the mental load of parenting is extremely heavy. I mean, let me know right now if you feel that, if you feel that this is a bit of a weight on your shoulders, managing the day-to-day -day schedules, managing behaviors, managing emotions, you know, keeping the house organized. And on top of that, you probably have some desires for self-care or to do your day job or a million other things that we need to do. Now, emotionally, we worry about our children's future, right? Hands up if you worry about your children's future. If you, know, if you feel like you look around today at today's youth and you think, I'm worried. I don't want my children suffering from anxiety and depression. I don't want them to be captured by bad ideas. I don't want them to be estranged from me and just leave home and never look back, right? I want them to be able to stand on their own two feet, to be financially stable, to be healthy in mind and body, right? But before we even get to the future, let's stay in the present. We might feel overstretched and overwhelmed right now. Like there's more on my plate than I can handle. I can't tell you the amount of times I have felt I can't handle this. It's too much, right? Just that feeling of my life right now is too much. It's too much for one person. You know, they say that it takes a village to raise a child. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, so where's the village? Do I have to call someone? Are they just gonna show up? Where are these people, <laughs> right? Why is it just me all the time? And if we even travel further back in time to the past, we might feel guilty about mistakes we've made. You know, I've had the great honor and pleasure of coaching thousands of parents. And one thing that happens consistently with all the parents who I have ever coached is that they tell me some kind of guilt story they have in their past. Oh, I didn't breastfeed for long enough. I had a cesarean section. I yelled at my kids too much. I didn't spend enough time with them. I went straight back to work, right? They have some kind of story that they hold in the depths, the darkest depths of their heart of why they've damaged their child, of why they can never be forgiven and why they're always going to be ashamed. And this is something that I really want to coach you and myself to forgive ourselves, to lighten our load and not to feel so guilty. But what do we do with all these feelings? Well, we go searching for the answers, right? You go to the experts, you go to the blogs, you go to the books. Now, disclaimer, I'm about to say some tough love, controversial, countercultural stuff. If you don't like that, now would be the time to leave. I totally get it. But if you're here for the ride, I want to just tell you clearly that I love parenting books. In fact, I'm a bit of a parenting book junkie. I've read over 100 parenting books in my time. I've taken courses. I love this stuff. And with that, with all of that exposure and knowledge and deep dive researching, here's something I've realized. What answers do we actually find from these books? What answers do we actually find from all these articles and all these blogs and all the mom influencers and all the coaches that sound a lot like me and their YouTubes look a lot like mine? And I know I'm totally part of this ecosystem. But what are the answers that come to us? Often the answers look something like this. And just let me know if this is something you've noticed or as I'm saying this, if it's ringing true for you. More special time. Your child is acting out because you don't spend enough time with them, right? Your child is lying or stealing or throwing things or screaming because you don't give them enough attention. They need more attention. 
you need to follow careful scripts. The way you're phrasing it is wrong. You're uh, praising too much. You're not praising enough. That language is shaming. That language is not empathic enough, right? You have to be more careful and edit and moderate the way that you speak. Is that something that you've picked up on? You need more empathy. You need more validation. You need to be there with your child more, offer them more eye contact, offer them more kindness and calm and presence. You need to explain more patiently when you want something. Can't just tell them what to do. You've got to explain. You've got to offer choices, right? But not too many choices. You've got to offer at least two, but not four. That's too many, right? Hey, you need to be more playful. You're too serious. You're too scary. When you yell, it's damaging them for life. It's the same as, you know, spanking. You've got to be more playful. And You've got to be a better role model. You've got to first regulate yourself. You've got to start with you. You've got to show them how to have manners and how, if you say thank you for the first 10 years of their life, then in the 11th year, they'll start saying thank you, right? You've got to model more. Now here's the good news. All of what I just said, great advice. These are good tools, why not? Sure, good modeling, good emotional regulation, great scripts here and there, that's all fine. But here's the bad news. It will not make parenting easier, right? We all know this. It's going to make it more intensified. It's going to put everything back on you. Uh, there's always something that you could improve in yourself. There's always a way that you're imperfect because I, I happen to know that you're human. And so I just happen to know that fact about you, right? And it won't make your child behave better. I mean, it might in a very minor way or in a very specific way, right? It's not a bad idea to be good at communication skills and self-regulation, that's a good idea, but it's not gonna solve the majority of the problem. And it won't help you enjoy your family more. And I'm gonna illustrate for you exactly why and what we need to do instead. So don't worry, I'm not just picking holes in this, I'm actually gonna lay out an alternative plan, all right? The truth is that robotic parenting is not the answer. And this is something I've heard from so many of my students that I feel, thank you, Avital, thank you for telling me I don't need to be a robot. I can unbotox my smile and I can un, you know, coat my, my voice in sugar. I can be myself more, I can be more natural. And in fact, robotic parenting is gonna deplete you. It's gonna exhaust you. Of course, you're not enjoying it when you feel so, stifled, right? So scripted, right? And these scripted, rehearsed, gentle, peaceful, conscious parenting won't get you there. Where? To that vision of yours, to a great family life. I'm going to explain why. Don't worry. I won't leave you hanging. Just bear with me here because it's important to understand that it is not about how nicely you ask. Listen, by all means, ask nicely. Say, please, can you put your shoes on? Or just say shoes or whatever you say. That's fine. But it's not about how nicely you ask. Those things are all important. I teach them myself. I'm not trying to degrade them. They're just missing the more important, bigger picture. I'm gonna explain exactly what I mean. So how will I illustrate this? Well, I wanna ask you, what do you need to perform well? What do you need to have a great atmosphere at home? What do you need to show up at your job with great energy? What do you need in order to be, you know, your kindest, best, most energetic, most helpful, most productive self? Well, I can tell you, um, what I, what I need, okay, uh, I don't need my partner, my boss, my colleagues to speak to me in a sugary sweet way. They don't need to tiptoe around me or be on eggshells, okay? I mean, I like it when people are nice to me, right? That's nice. But what I really need for me to perform my best? Well, here's a list, okay? I actually need quite a lot of things, all right? For example, I need a good night's sleep for everyone in our household. I need predictable routines. I need clarity. I need organization in my head about what we're doing and when we're doing it. I need an organized physical environment. Is that true for you too? Does clutter overwhelm you? Does a busy, you know, messy household make you more edgy and irritable? I need healthy food. When I stuff my face, when I eat two tubs of ice cream, I don't feel very good. Then I feel, you know, crabby. Then I'm more, you know, unkind and unpleasant and less likely to do the things I meant to do. I need time in nature because again, I'm a human and humans need time in the sun. We need time with green. This is so much research and back to back it up uh, that we know that this is true. Uh, I need tech free time, right? I, if I'm glued to my phone and my screen for eight, nine, 12 hours a day, I'm not gonna perform at my best. I need movement. 
right? Whether it's sweating, running, lifting weights, doing yoga, just moving my body a little bit. I, I mean, hey, let's all do it right now. Just roll your shoulders. Just, you know, get out those creaks in your neck. We already immediately feel better, right? I need time with good friends so that I can unpack my feelings and feel like I'm in a community and feel like I'm not alone. So, you know, exactly how people talk to me is maybe responsible for about 5% of my behavior. But what's actually responsible for how I show up to my day is my habits. That's what makes the biggest change. These habits of good sleep, et cetera, et cetera, all the things I just listed are going to completely influence how I perform and what atmosphere I create around me, what my energy is. So I don't need sugary, fake, or even particularly worded requests from everyone. Like it's nice if they talk to me nicely, it's nice if they make eye contact, but what I really need is habits. If I have the goal of showing up and teaching my daughter to read, I need to establish a habit, a daily habit where we sit down and we do reading together right? For uh, showing up and creating videos or my podcast or doing my coaching, I need the habit, right? Uh, for uh, having a really easy, peaceful bedtime routine that is predictable. I need a habit. I need to generate that. Uh, showing up with energy to my work or as a daughter, as a wife, as a mother, right? These are all things that actually rely on my habits. How's my morning routine? Do we get out of the house easily? Does every, is everyone used to what they need to do, right? Getting on shoes, brushing teeth, etc. Well, here's the thing is that this ratio <laughs> it might be a bit extreme but i think it's somewhere around this this ratio is the same for your family okay just like it is for you it's for your family it's not about more and more and more parenting right parenting skills are good but they will not account for the vast vast untapped area of family habits if you want your child to be able to get ready independently in the morning, that's habit. If you want them to live a life of movement and health, if you want to have regular family meals where you have deep conversations and discuss your feelings, if you want to impart a peaceful, uh, predictable bedtime, right? You could do all the parenting in the world. Talk to your child like this, talk to your child like that. Empathize, validate, reflect, mirror, right? All of that stuff. It's not going to give you a peaceful bedtime if you haven't established the habit, if you haven't created the environment, right? <laughs> it won't, it just won't help. It will be the same battle day in, day out. You want children who help, who do teamwork, who grow up to know how to make simple meals and keep their environment clean and respect property. Those are all habits that we entrench at home. If prayer or spiritual practice, if uh, connection with nature, being outdoors, if reading and a love of books, if organizing our home, all of these things are habits that we can create and we must create them as family habits. It's not enough to just role model them, not enough for just you to do these things. We have to actually create a family that understands what we do as a family. How does this thing work? It's predictable, it's organized, it's repetitive. So take a look at this with me now. And if you've been multitasking, if I've lost you, come back to me because this is a really important point. I'm going to illustrate it for you right here. So make sure to be looking at the screen, okay? Parenting is a heavy load on you. How do I know this? Because you are lifting all of that work, all of that mental labor, all of the mental load, saying the right thing in the right way, with the right facial expression, with the right interaction, that's all on you. When you bring habits into the equation, they lift up the parenting for you, okay? A child who is used to having an incredible family meal every evening and they know that they set the table and then they wash their hands and then they sit down together and then they ask each other about the day and then there's a gratitude practice and then we clear the table as a team and then I go to my bedroom and, uh, and, you know, and get into pajamas, et cetera. I've established those habits. I don't need to parent. I don't need to keep negotiating, keep explaining, keep talking through it because the habits are doing the lifting for me. In fact, what you'll notice is I can go and rest. My, you know, often my house will just kind of run like clockwork. Things will move forward. Okay, I don't want to paint too pretty a picture. We still sometimes have, you know, conflicts and things that I want to deal with. But just this week, just this week, I was really busy at work. In fact, I was preparing for these sessions here. And I didn't get to making dinner. I was too busy. And my children, okay, my children were like, you know what, mom? We've got this. 
and they went and prepared dinner for me, for my husband and for their two little siblings, okay, my eldest three. Why? Because they had the habit. They have been cooking, they have been learning to clean, they have been learning what we do, you know, and I thought it was going to be a disaster, but it wasn't. And I surprised even myself that the habit had simply been established and therefore they were able to do it. Now, you might be asking yourself, what are these habits? And I've been teaching them in various ways, but I want to tell you they are all packaged up for you with a bow inside the studio membership. This is something you can join today. The doors are open right now. I will break it down for you step by step by step. Things like learning how to handle money, things like critical thinking skills, things like being screen wise and not being addicted to the screens, like taking a break, like working as a team, right? Like building good friendships. All of those things are packaged up for you. And I will exactly explain to you what each habit entails and why this is critical for your family. Now, whether or not you join, I want to help you with those three keys that I promised. And we're going to dive right into that right now because I want to help you implement. The studio is a membership exactly for this, for building a meaningful family life, one habit at a time. And I invite you to join. You can go to highfam.com slash studio and join right now. Doors are closing soon for an entire year. And I really want you to get this. I really want you to establish this because it's life changing. I believe in this so much. I have seen so many families go through this process and it's heartwarming and incredible. Incredible. But whether or not you're able to join the studio right now, I want to help you unlock the how. How do we do it? How do we actually build these habits? How do we overcome the inherent obstacles that are there? Okay. So this was the message from Fatima who said, you know, this list of, of different ideas and different habits is beautiful, but also there's too much to do. You know, I feel like if I don't manage it all, then I will have failed. And so I don't even begin. How many of you have that feeling like, oh, the task is to too big. It's too daunting. Avital, you just showed us like 30 different habits we're supposed to establish. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. What should I do? I just give up. Uh, to begin with, I don't even try. You might be thinking to yourself, you know, I'm not even going to try and join the studio because I can't even do one habit, right? But that's where you would be wrong, because that is exactly what I would advise from you. When we feel like there's too much to do and I'm so busy and I can't do it, here's what we need to remind ourselves of, okay? You are the captain of the ship, okay? You are the captain of this ship. And that means that we need you at the helm, okay? You need to be holding that steering wheel you are the captain. Now, yes, my, my pets, my dears, my loves, there will be stormy seas, okay? There will be. There are times in our parenting when, you know, things are tough. We go through financial turmoil. There's disease. We're helping a elderly parent. Our children come up with some kind of diagnosis. Uh, there's, you know, political unrest. Whatever it is, there are stormy seas. And those are the times that we even more so need to be at the helm. And there will also be smooth sailing. There will be those beautiful times where things are manageable, where you feel in control. But the thing that you need to know is that you're the captain either way, in both scenarios, whatever happens. And a small change today, okay? You, you join the studio, you take on one habit, just one, okay? Just one. It will have outsized benefits. And here's what I mean. I want you to imagine a compass and we're, we're charting a course, we're drawing a straight line, okay? I'm directing my compass north. And so I keep going north and I hit my target. Now, what happens if I move my compass only slightly, just the slightest touch, right, to the east? What's going to happen? Well, I've just completely changed my destination, right? This is the difference between hitting, you know, Australia or uh africa right I i'm getting to a different continent because i've changed my direction but just by a tiny change today you could change the entire legacy of your family for generations to come and i mean that literally okay so i want to invite you today to make a one degree change okay a one degree change for a completely new course, right? To charter a completely new course for your family. You don't need to take on all the habits. You need to take on just one, okay? And the meta, big, real family habit that you need to take on is 
the very awareness that you've already gained here today. So you've already done it, which is the awareness that family habits is how we create a family life we love. This is the tool, not more and more and more and more parenting. It's not here in your throat. It's not about how nicely you ask, okay? It's about creating the habits that create the family, okay? Really important. And just to illustrate this, this was just such a heartwarming story and there are thousands like this and I won't you know, share all of them. You can find more at highfam.com slash studio. But look at Leslie. She's been a member for two years now and she feels more confidence and joy by this tiny change. What was the change? She, re, uh, she decluttered her pantry. OK, her pantry was cluttered and she took on the habit inside of the studio. She got the coaching. She got the accountability. She got the step by step guidance and she decluttered her studio, her pantry. OK, now, what did this mean for Leslie? What it meant was that she feels more guest ready. OK, she was less embarrassed by the way her, her house looks. So suddenly she's more welcoming. She's more inviting. Her neighbor knocks on the door to borrow sugar and she says, hey, do you want to come in for a cup of coffee? And suddenly she's creating a friendship all because she decluttered her pantry. So do you see how just a one degree change, just one thing that I take on can make a massive change in my destiny for my entire family, all right? And if you want the kind of guidance, the kind of accountability, the kind of step-by-step -step, uh, to get these kind of results, then just join me in the studio and we will do it together. You do not have to do this alone. All right, so this is the number one high fan mindset that drives us in the studio one degree of change. Okay, it's always just one degree of change. All right, let's keep going. Here's another question that came in from Alice who said, awesome ideas, where on earth do I start? Okay, I feel like I'm just keeping my head above the water with day-to-day -day stuff. If I had to do one thing, which should it be? So Alice is asking, okay, a one degree change, but which one degree change? Okay, where do we start? And I want to take you back. Uh, maybe this was very recent for you, or maybe it was a little while ago. But I want to take you back to when your baby first started walking. Okay, maybe you're in that stage right now. When your baby is just starting to take their first steps. Okay, now there is a saying that says the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago, right? Then the tree would be fully grown by now and we could enjoy its shade and its fruit. But what's the second best time to plant a tree? If I didn't do it 10 years ago, then when should I do it? Well, the second best time is right now. Okay, now our children know this, right? Our babies aren't like, oh, I should have started work walking a day ago. I would have been ahead of my friends. They just start where they are. They start right now. And I wanna ask you, look around, what could you do right now? What's one little habit that you could establish that can make a big change for you, but it's a baby step and you could take it on right now. Think about our babies. They don't say, well, I can't run, so I'm not even gonna learn to walk right? No, they don't say all or nothing. They say small and something. They start small and they build from there. First, they roll from their backs to their tummies. Then they crawl. Then they take one step. They fall down, but then they take another step. And eventually, you know, most of them get it. And that is what we need to adopt in our mindsets. Don't say to me, Avital, I can't join the studio. I can't take on all these habits because I don't even know where to start. And I'm so overwhelmed. No problem. I'm gonna pace you through, just do one tiny thing and you'll see outsized benefits. I wanna give you a really important example. Did you know that there is one habit that families can establish, okay? Just giving this to you for free right now and please take it and run with it. One habit that has outsized benefits, it actually prevents or you know contributes to preventing uh, incarceration, drug use, teen pregnancy. It improves academic skills. It improves uh, physical and mental health. Do you know what this habit is? It's just a simple habit. You don't even have to do it very well. Have a family meal together. Sit down and eat together without the TV on. Just doing that once a week will make a massive difference to your family. So I guide my students to take one step and then the other. We can learn from our babies in this, right? What's the next right thing? What could I do that is going to move us towards, uh, you know, a better atmosphere? My child's going crazy and giving me a headache. What's the next right thing? Should we all go outside and get some nature time, right? I'm in here. I've got tons of work to do. The kids are going mad. They're making a mess in the house. What's the next right thing? 
Should we get out a craft project so that they can do activities next to me while I finish my job, right? I'm in the kitchen, everything's a mess. My, my baby needs to nurse, I'm exo- what's the next right thing? Should we go and snuggle in bed and take a nap and come back to it when we're feeling more energized? This is a question that can guide you no matter where you are. What's the next right thing? Even if the whole morning was chaos, I was yelling, I didn't show up, the kids were awful. Can we just hit the reset button and move forward to the next right thing? Because success breeds success. And here is something that's really sad about parenting is that we never celebrate our wins. We never say, you know what, this morning went smoothly, or I didn't yell even though I wanted to, or we all got out in nature even though it was a bit crazy. And I believe that we do need to celebrate our successes so that we can keep going, right? We all need pats on the back. And you as a parent, you don't get raises, you don't get uh, you know, yearly reviews, you don't get a salary, you don't get awards or trophies or accolades or awareness and probably no one even knows what you're doing and probably no one even knows your wins and you might feel really invisible and that's no way to live right so i'm here to recognize your wins the studio community is here to recognize your wins but most of all i want to encourage you to recognize them and to take note of them take a look at rachel who said my kids are working as a team okay it was a rocky start but she finally started her family meal and it gave her the incentive she needed to finally start teaching her kids how to cook right and look they're learning knife skills. They're making salad snacks instead of junk food. This one habit of starting a family meal cascaded into so many other habits. And that's the beautiful thing is that habits stack on each other, right? You start one good habit, it begets another one. It's a virtuous cycle. So if you feel stuck in a vicious cycle, I want you to ask yourself, what is the next right thing? And start a virtuous cycle instead. Okay, and finally, Jess wrote, I love the idea of setting up rituals and traditions of teamwork, but the problem is there's always drama when I wanna try these things. How do I do it without the drama, right? How can I have a family meal without the drama? How can we get out in nature? How can we be screen free without the drama? How can I do more reading time or more peaceful bedtimes or an organized family routine or declutter the playroom without the drama? It's a good question, isn't it? Is that something that you ask yourself as well? Like, I would like to do all of this, but there's always drama. There's, there's chaos, there's yelling. Okay, if so, here's what I want to tell you. You're asking yourself the very normal, very common question, how can I do it without the drama? But my friend, this is the wrong question and here's why. Family life has drama. That's just inevitable. That's just built in. That's just how it is. And there's something about our modern way of living that makes us think that it should be drama free, that it should be more quiet and more peaceful, et cetera, et cetera. But that kind of trips us up. If we avoided our dreams because of the drama, then we would never get anywhere, right? Like we're never gonna move forward. We're never gonna try things. We're never gonna have fun. You're never gonna have that family life you enjoy and love if there's drama that makes you not do it. So instead, rather than finding ways to do it without the drama, okay? I actually want you to flip that on its head. I want to say, do it with the mess. Do it with the rush. Do it with the tantrums. Do it with the drama, okay? There will be drama. It's almost sure. Do the meals with the drama. Do the outings with the drama. Establish these habits, the bedtime routine with the drama. Okay, this is a really important mantra that I teach inside of the studio. You do it with the drama. And here's the beautiful thing. You do it enough times with the drama, the drama dissipates. Okay, that's the power of a habit. If I hate working out, but I keep doing it, eventually there'll be much less resistance in my mind. I'll break down that threshold. If my kids hate brushing their teeth, but we brush their teeth. And they hate using a seatbelt, but we keep using a seatbelt. Eventually, they stop resisting so much because why resist? All right. This is just a fact of life. This is just how things are done. It just becomes obvious. So you do it with the drama. This is Anneli, who's, who's a mother of six, and she went out on a tech break hike, right? To be screen free and in nature, to be fit, to find peace of mind, to, to find beauty and to bring her three, her six kids and their three cousins. All right now you might say, oh my gosh, you went out with nine kids. That sounds like lots of drama. She did it with the drama. 
with the crying baby, with the diaper changes, with the kid who says, I'm bored, I want to go home, with all of that, she did it with the drama. And that's why she gets to brag, to celebrate the win, to be happy with herself that she did it nonetheless. She did not let that stop her. And I don't want you to let it stop you either. So don't let the drama stop you. The drama will go. It will end. You have to keep doing it until the drama disappears, okay? Don't let the drama beat you. <laughs> you beat the drama, do it with the drama, all right? So how exactly are we gonna establish these, uh, these habits that I keep talking about, these important family habits, okay? How does it work? Well, first of all, you need a plan, right? Just like if you wanted to start fitness or you wanted to get out of debt, you would go to a coach, a financial coach, a fitness coach, and they'd help you come up with a plan. They would give you clear goals that were reasonable, that were realistic, and they would help you break them down into small steps. Then you would also need coaching, right? You're going to hit bumps in the road. You're going to hit resistance. You're going to find it hard. You're going to need to customize it. And most of all, you're going to need the mindsets, like the mindsets I've just given you here today, like do it with the drama right? Or like the idea of continuing to show up like you're the captain of the ship. These are the types of empowering mindsets to be able to achieve your goals. But then one of the things that research has shown us improves our results on our resolutions by about 65% is accountability, right? You need a community that will help you to show up with consistency. And everybody, I don't mean you, I mean, everybody needs that. We all need people who we commit to, who we show them our goals, who are also on the same journey so that they can influence us. Okay. Now I want you to consider how much we invest in things like college degrees, right? I mean, people invest tens and sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars in getting a college degree for their career. And that's all fine and dandy. But what about our families, right? Even our driver's licenses get more investment of time, energy, and money than our family does. And creating a family life you love is arguably the most important thing in the world, right? It's the most important relationship of your life. But we invest almost nothing in establishing these habits, right? Like if I want to get fit, there's a fitness coach, there are fitness plans, there are fitness memberships, I can join all of that, I can get the, I can get the customized plan, I can get the videos, I can watch them. If I want to get out of debt, if I want to get a driver's license, if I want to get a degree, I can find the mentors, the programs, right, even the, the, the colleges that are all dedicated to the, to those studies. But what is there for us as parents? What helps us crush our goals as parents? Do we even think of ourselves as having goals for our family? We should. Because the truth is that families rise and fall to the level of their habits. If you establish great habits slowly but surely, if you stack them on, then you're able to create the family life that you love to live. And a meaningful family life is built just like that, one small habit at a time. And there's a lot of research to show exactly how we build, build these habits, what the cadence should be, and that is something that we should rely on and utilize, not just in things like fitness, but also in things like family. Now, I do need to kind of warn you in a way not to be a fear monger, but if you don't build great family habits, then someone else will do it for you. I want you to think about all the influencers, all the TikTokers, all the apps, right? Uh, some of them uh, could be somewhat predatory or just bad influences, right? They just might not have the values that you necessarily agree with. You might not like their message, right? Nothing against crowns and dollar bills and gold pumps, but maybe that's not what you want leading and influencing your child's brain. And instead, I actually want to help you to become your child's biggest influencer. I want you to be able to say, I am going to set an incredible tone around here. I am going to establish really great habits around here. I'm going to create an environment that actually brings out the best in all of us, right? That we can all perform to our highest level. Just like I said, it's not just about how you parent. It's not just about how you talk to your child. It's about the environment that you create. And if you're thinking, Avital, my house is cluttered. I don't know even when to begin. My schedule is disorganized. I don't know how to get it in order. My kids are unruly. I'm worried I'm raising jerks. Um, you know, if you're just feeling like, I don't know where to begin, then I am here to guide you, okay? I want to invite you to surround yourself with other parents who are on the same journey, 
Okay, I have thousands of students inside the studio. We are all on this journey. We are all there because we want to build a family life that we love. We want to create great habits. We want to raise great kids. We want to impart values and common sense. And that's a bit countercultural and a bit controversial and a bit of tough love, like I promised it would be. That's not what most parents are busy doing but I know that you're not most parents because you are here. So let's start creating a family life that you love. And I invite you to join me inside the studio today. Make sure to hurry because doors are closing very soon and they'll stay closed for quite some time. And also you really can't afford to waste any time when it comes to creating these habits, right? The best time was 10 years ago, the second best time is right now. So I have time for just a very few questions that have come in. I'm gonna spend a, a moment or two answering each and then we'll close up. I love what you teach, but I have a very different family than you. How do I know this will work for me? So this is one of the most common questions that we get asked. I have a different family. Hey, let me know which type of family do you have? Maybe it's a blended family. Maybe you have same sex parents. Maybe you have adoptive children or foster children. Maybe you have children uh, who have special needs. Maybe you have lots of children or only one child or children who are spaced or twins. Maybe you homeschool, maybe you public school. Uh, maybe you're religious, maybe you're atheist. There are so many different types of beautiful and incredible families. Let me just tell you this. Inside of the studio, we've had almost a hundred countries represented, okay? People from over a hundred countries, all different walks of life, all different faith, uh, all different types of families, uh, everywhere on the political spectrum. It's truly a beautiful and diverse community, and we all come under the same mission, which is to build a strong family culture, right? To create these great habits, to be leaders and captains for our children and to give them common sense and values. And so if that's something that speaks to you, then this will work for you, okay? You don't have to have a family like mine. You don't have to be a parent like me. In fact, I hope you're not. I hope you're a parent like you. My goal is to empower you to take back your intuition and your instincts, to feel that you are the expert on raising your children. That actually, in the end, you need less you know, coaching and support and help and experts because you have formed yourself into someone confident with a strong backbone, with broad shoulders, with clear thinking, with a powerful and empowering and compelling vision that fills you with conviction, right? That's what I want for you. And so that's, I can say that this will work for you because I've seen it work for thousands of parents. And when I say work, right, that's what I mean. I mean, they can go from a situation that makes them want to scream, that makes them want to run away, that feels chaotic, that feels out of control, that feels like they don't know what to do next, that feels disorganized, uh, feeling like their kids just never listen, feeling like parenting is very thankless, right? To feeling like, you know what? There are still challenges. My kids still act out sometimes. I still lose my cool sometimes, but wow. Parenting has become the greatest adventure of my life. I am loving it. I am, you know, really enjoying every moment. Yes, I still need a break sometimes, but I feel really empowered and really capable. And I feel really confident that I'm raising my kids with the values that I believe in. I'm excited to try it out. Great. Quick question. You call this a proven method. And what do you mean by that? Okay. So what I mean by that is pretty much along the lines of what I've just said is that this method is actually based on years of research, trial and error. Um, and uh, I've been teaching it for about seven years or, or so, right? And it's evolved with time. We, ac we actually recreate and redesign and re-edit the materials to constantly tweak them and improve them and get you the best results and keep it the most up to date, right? Uh, this program is based both on science and research and data, but also on common sense, on ancient wisdom, right? Uh, on uh, on practical solutions and on design, which by the way, I didn't go into here, but that's my background. My background is in design. So I'm very into practical, you know, real life environmental solutions. Okay. And I, I have just really thousands of students who are alumni who have been through the program for years. We have members who are in their fifth, sixth and seventh years in the program. And uh, we see the result. And I have I have a goal in my mind. This is my selfish goal for me in my in my kind of mission in my work in this world. 
which is that I have, I do not like vanity metrics. Okay. I don't care how many subscribers, how many views, how many comments, how many people watch my stuff. Why? Because that's just more and more consumption. The fact that people are watching more and more of my things. I mean, that's nice. That's flattering. That's fun, but it's not proof that they're getting results. The only thing that I care about in my programs is when people come back to me at the end of the program or they've, you know, they're in the program for over a year and they say to me, Avital, this is where I was before and this is where I am now. Okay. Before I felt like I was drowning and now I feel like I'm flying. Okay. When they say those things, when they tell me about the, the organization and the decluttering in the home, when they tell me that bedtime has become peaceful and suddenly there's no tantrums at bedtime, when they tell me that their marriage has improved because suddenly their home is so much easier to run and they're fighting less about chores. When they tell me that their 11 year old can cook a meal for himself and he feels so proud of himself. When they tell me these stories and they tell me these stories every day, that's when I see the proof. That's when I think, okay, this is a proven method. I can absolutely stand by that, okay? It sounds amazing, but I have a lot on my plate right now. Can I join later? Okay, so I get it. We're all busy. And I do want to kind of just reiterate, if you feel like you have so much on your plate, if you feel like life is chaotic right now, that is more of a reason to join now and not later so that I can help you establish a sense of control, okay? When life is really busy, when it feels chaotic, when everything's out of control, when you have too much on your plate, that's exactly the time. That's exactly the time to say, okay, I need structure. I need lists and guidance and coaching and mindsets to keep me afloat. Okay. And so if you're feeling like you have a lot on your plate right now, can you join later? Of course. I mean, you can join in a year, but a year in a child's life is a very long time. And a year of establishing habits is an opportunity to create real amazing change in your life. Right. I mean, when I look at my student Galina and what she accomplished in a year, Galina got fit. Okay. She had not been consistently doing workouts um, ever since before she had kids, but she got fit inside of the studio because suddenly she had the consistency, the coaching, the accountability, right? She created regular family meals with extended family, reconnecting her with her roots, with her spirituality, with her cousins and grandparents, which is absolutely incredible. She decluttered her children's bedroom and established much better sleep hygiene because sleep was a big you know, pain point in their home, but now they have sleep full nights. And do you know what that does to a family? Do you know how much better kids behave when they sleep well at night? Do you know how much better we behave as parents when we sleep well at night? I mean, these were huge results. So, and there were, there were several more, but I don't want to go on and on about it. You can read all about it at highfam.com slash the studio. Um, and so I would recommend not waiting. If you have a bit of a song in your heart, if you feel like, wow, this speaks to me, I'm curious, I just wanna try it out, try it out. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain by trying it out. If you've been pinning and scrolling and comparing and Instagram and blogs and vlogs and, you know, if you or if you're just in your own head feeling like, am I failing? Am I getting this right? Am I missing something? Then the studio is for you and you should join. And one of the things we hear from our students more often than anything, is they tell us I've erased all my other apps. I'm not on social media anymore. I'm free <laughs> because I have everything I need right here. And it's true, you'll have everything that you need right there. So my friends, this is your last invitation here to join the studio. Go to highfam.com slash studio. I cannot wait to invite you in. I cannot wait to see what you create rather than consume. I cannot wait to see you feeling confident as the captain of your ship and doing it with the drama, but creating those remarkable family habits that create a meaningful family life. I will see you on the inside. Much, much love.